current Starliner crew that is docked to the International Space Station may or may not return with Starliner. They may or may not return with Dragon. Regardless, expect to see very few Starliner missions in the future. I'm Lara Forsick. I'm the executive director of space consulting firm Astrolytical. We track the emerging space industry. NASA had a press briefing today, primarily for a cargo mission that will be launching to the International Space Station soon. But they did touch upon some questions that we've had regarding the Starliner crew, the two astronauts that have been on board the ISS now for almost two months when they were only expected to be up there for a little over a week. As I referenced in my video last week, which you can watch here if you'd like, NASA awarded money to SpaceX very recently for an emergency response study. And NASA has been denying that this has anything to do with the astronauts that are on board the International Space Station that may or may not return on Starliner or Dragon. But a lot of us in the industry have been suspecting that, you know, NASA's not being entirely truthful here, that yes, this study is actually having to do with how do you fit one or two extra people on board Dragon, specifically if Starliner is not fit to return back to Earth with people on board. Bill Spetch of NASA said in the press briefing today that that emergency study had nothing to do with the Starliner crew. Instead, it had to do with Tracy Dyson, a NASA astronaut who is on board ISS right now, who flew up with a Russian Soyuz and is scheduled to return back down to earth with Russian Soyuz September or no earlier than September of this year. And I find this puzzling because the crew exchange program between NASA and Roscosmos, the Russian space agency, has been stable for many years. Even two and a half years ago, the past two and a half years, when Russia invaded Ukraine, that crew exchange program continued uninterrupted. There was a period of time when Dmitry Rogozin, the head of Roscosmos at the time, was threatening to leave behind a NASA astronaut on the ISS, you know, even put out a video to that effect. And that was bad times for sure. But Dmitry Rogozin no longer runs Roscosmos. And um, there's really no danger that we publicly know of that Tracy Dyson would be stuck on the ISS or would need to return through Dragon rather than Soyuz. It could be that there's something going on behind the scenes where uh, Russia has not been a reliable partner. Or there's hardware issues, there's quality control issues. I don't know. But Eric Berger put out an article last night on Ars Technica, which I will link below. And he also was arguing during this press briefing on Twitter, on X, that he has multiple sources within SpaceX and NASA saying that emergency response study does have to do with the Starliner crew. At the end of the press briefing, Jared Metter of SpaceX was asked a question about the two astronauts returning back on Crew Dragon. Uh, the Crew Dragon has always actually been designed to carry up to seven people uh, to low Earth orbit and back. So we retain all those same capabilities today that were initially designed in. So SpaceX is, you know, keeping it open that they could bring back up to seven people. They only need six. The four that they typically send up during a NASA crew, plus the additional two astronauts from Starliner. For what it's worth, the cargo mission that's expected to launch, it's a, a Northrop Grumman mission, but it's launching on Falcon 9 because Antares is currently being reworked. They are not bringing up extra spacesuits on that mission for those two astronauts to return back on a Dragon. They left it open as a possibility that they could do so on a future on a future Dragon mission. The outcome of this mission is going to help determine Starliner's future. Boeing is a publicly traded company, which means they have SEC filings every quarter. And in a briefing yesterday about their second quarter, Boeing admitted that they took another $125 million charge on Starliner. So backing up a little bit, these commercial crew program contracts, they are fixed price contracts. NASA is giving Boeing and SpaceX a fixed amount of money and any extra charges, any extra expenses on top of that money is taken out of the profits. It is a loss to those companies. And what we've seen is that Boeing has already lost $1.6 billion on the Starliner program because of the numerous delays from the uncrewed test flights and now this particular crewed flight. In their SEC filing for Q2 of 2024, they say, risk remains that we may record additional losses in future periods, which tells me that Boeing is actually not planning to just straight cut off Starliner after this mission if Starliner is unable to return the astronauts back to Earth. That statement is telling me that they are prompting their stakeholders that they may in the future see additional losses from the Starliner program. How does Starliner compare to SpaceX in terms of launch cadence? Which it's really hard to judge right now because we're at the very, very start of the Starliner crewed program. 
but I do want to give you some background on how successful SpaceX has been delivering their contracts for NASA. May 2020, when we had the launch of the Demo 2 mission, that was SpaceX's first Crew Dragon mission for NASA, which delivered two astronauts to the International Space Station. I was live on BBC tearing up as I was watching this launch. It was really emotional. I super quick plotted up the time differences between crewed launches for NASA. So between Demo 2 and and crew one, between crew one and crew two, et cetera, et cetera. So you can see that on the screen right now, it's a super quick and easy little Excel graph, but you can see that there's roughly about six months, half a year between crew launches for NASA. And for right now, I'm putting aside the commercial crew launches, which I will get to later. Just for NASA, it conducts a crewed flight to the International Space Station approximately every five to seven months. The average is a little less than six months. So a little less than half a year is the launch cadence for NASA crew missions carried out by SpaceX. Whether that launch cadence is set by NASA, NASA saying, hey, we want approximately two a year, or whether it's SpaceX saying, here's what we can deliver, we can deliver approximately two a year, I don't know. It might be just a compromise between the two. But regardless, it seems to be working out. Even with the recent Falcon 9 mishap that caused a pause for two weeks, not very long at all. But even with that mishap, what we're seeing is that Crew 9, which I do have on that graph, um, I should probably have in a little asterisk because it hasn't launched yet. The, not, the um, net date, the no earlier than date for Crew 9 is August 18th, which is what I used to plot that graph. And so what we see there is that it's not even six months between Crew Crew 8 launch and Crew 9. Yesterday, NASA announced the Crew 10 manifest. So the four astronauts that are going to fly up on Crew 10, which is currently scheduled for February of next year, which again would be about six months. So we can see a pretty even cadence there of SpaceX being a reliable partner for NASA's crewed missions to the International Space Station. That does not count the four commercial missions that have currently flown on a Crew Dragon, that is Inspiration 4 and Axiom 1, 2, and 3. Polaris Dawn is currently scheduled for the end of August we don't have an exact date yet and axiom four it was supposed to launch in like i think it was supposed to launch actually in august as well it got pushed right now to no earlier than november and unofficial sources are saying it's already pushed into 2025 so we'll just have to see but in addition to those regular nasa launches spacex has a thriving commercial crew launch program as well Boeing, it's another story. So we just had the first crewed Boeing flight on Starliner. Boeing crew test flight launched on June 5th. And before June 5th, before we noticed all of these problems with that mission, Starliner 1, which is the first post-certification full flight for NASA, was scheduled for as early as February of next year, February 2025. That has now been pushed to August 2025. So already, assuming that the program goes forward and assuming no more really big problems, then that's already a 14 month cadence right there. That's that's 14 months from the CFT to Starliner 1. If we do see more problems, then Starliner 1 could be pushed even further. By contract, Boeing is supposed to deliver Starliners 1 through 6 to NASA, like deliver those contracts. So it's supposed to have six additional missions for NASA to deliver crew to the International Space Station. Whether they can do that, I don't know. Whether they want to do that, I don't know. I had previously stated that I don't think Boeing is going to cancel Starliner because of the problems of this first mission. I think they'll hang on there a little bit longer. But Boeing just got a new CEO. And now is kind of the perfect time to say, hey, new CEO, new direction. We're going to cancel Starliner. We're going to cut our losses. I'm not saying that's going to happen, but I'm saying that it's a perfect excuse. One piece of information we do have from an earlier interview this year by Mark Nappy of Boeing is that the first three missions of Starliner are already being built. So I assume that's Starliner 1, 2, and 3. If they're already being built, if there's already hardware being assembled, uh, Boeing might not want to cut their losses right now. They might want to see how Starliner 1 goes. I think it's too early to say. My personal opinion is that at this point, it's more likely than not that the two astronauts are going to return on Starliner and not on Dragon. And I think it's more likely than not that Starliner 1 will move forward and happen eventually, whether it's August 2025 or later. And what I absolutely do not see happening, any kind of commercial contract for Starliner in the future when it comes to crew. So I, th I think that Boeing is going to limit itself just to NASA and this contract 
if they are successfully able to carry out those Star Ladder 1 through 6 missions and everything evens out and it's all okay, they have a track record, then maybe I can see them pushing towards commercial space stations in the future. But as of right now, they are really focused on delivering their contracts to NASA and they are not competitive at all compared to SpaceX. I did a whole video on that if you would like to see how Boeing Starliner compares to SpaceX Crew Dragon and other options. So if you're interested in seeing why I don't think Boeing Starliner is competitive at all, check out this video next.